tell me when to start up yeah live sir okay so good evening friends uh, welcome to this uh, very different kind of uh, webinar most of the times we have webinars on various academic topics like rirs and ca prostate and so many other topics which we have covered through various uh, institutes through usi through pharma companies so many things but we thought that this would be a very different webinar because now for last four months we are doing all academic activities only by webinars there are various video platforms which are available and there are many many companies which are uh, doing through different platforms the zoom is a at present most uh, commonly used platform but there are many other platforms which are equally good which are coming up and there are various concerns which are were which were raised about the zoom whether those concerns are really real or they are just the uh, potential concerns what are the various other platforms which are available what are the indian uh, paid platforms which are available whether there are any other uh, platforms uh, indian make which are as good as zoom so these are all various questions which keep uh, in our mind there are various uh, whatsapp uh, messages which are circulated and so many discussion which happens about these topics and therefore we thought that why not to have the webinar exclusively devoted and one to one and a half hours we discuss only about all these uh, issues there are still various issues which are uh, which are faced by the speakers audience in the zoom itself since zoom is very commonly used platform we are going to discuss about various troubleshooting problems in the zoom and what are the solutions about that so with this uh, introduction we decided to have this uh, webinar i welcome all of you again for this uh, webinar and i must say we have a excellent faculty today uh, who have done lots of work on this uh, uh, technical areas they are really tech savvy and we are going to hear from them about the various uh, uh, the program which uh, we have decided we have circulated the program details but briefly Raj rajiv tp is going to give us the brief idea about the what we uh, ideal video platform which uh, one is looking at uh, if you have to really th think of a uh, usi or any other uh, major institute from the education point of view what are the requirements he is going to give us idea about that then abhijit patil is going to give the overview of various platforms which we have at present then uh, dr nitesh jain uh, is going to give us the idea about the uh, social media and video, video conferencing platform as you know he has extensive experience about the managing the uh, ulto which has become the most popular video conferencing at various uh, facebook page as we have you received uh, everybody in the usi is member of the uh, video conferencing uh, that facebook page and he is going to give us the idea about the social media then uh, then uh, 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 then uh, 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 dishan is going to give us the troubleshooting how you sort out the troubleshooting of zoom and that's a very very important uh, uh, lecture he is going to give and of course at the end the abhijit patel will compare various platforms and then uh, who who would be the best uh, amongst all those platform that is how the program is going to be we are also going to have a very interesting uh, poll and i am going to first uh, put the poll questions you can these poll questions will remain on the youtube and the facebook page and for next 15 minutes you can keep on uh, putting the uh, poll questions you can put whatever choice you have i'm i'm going to share this poll questions uh, to you uh, for a minute and then uh, those questions actually will remain and then uh, you can uh, keep uh, voting for that and at the end uh, i will take up the uh, the answers we will analyze the answers which uh, people have given and then we'll carry out some discussion so the poll questions are do you prefer to attend webinar on the social media or be part of it on the video conferencing platform yes or no the the question is that many times you have the video uh, 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 like zoom you join the video meeting in which you have the potential to ask question yourself however on social media you have to ask question only on chat box 
So how do you prefer to join? Whether it is through social media, that is what which is commonly done now, or you want to be the part of meeting. You can put yes or no. The next question is that, uh, do you think personally asking questions in the meeting is better than asking through chat box? You can put yes, no, or maybe. Then there are a lot of concerns which are raised about the security of the Zoom. Kindly rate the security concerns which you have because now you have been using Zoom for last three, four months. One star, two star. If you have the highest security concern, uh, you can uh, choose five star. If you have no concern, you can just put one star. Then the uh, next question is that if you have equally user-friendly platform available, would you like to shift away from Zoom? Yes, no, or maybe. Now this question is specifically because a lot of people raised the question about Zoom uh, hacking and concerns. So if you have user-friendly platform, do you uh, shift or not? The last question is that, do you think uh, you see the recording? Many times what happens is that the recording is done about the uh, webinars and uh, to see for the subsequent week. But many times people don't see. So what is your experience? Do you see recording later on at your leisure time in case if you miss it or in case if there are parallel uh, webinars which are going on? Many times the people like to see, but uh, they, 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 they give up uh, in uh, seeing it. They start watching it, but they give up. Many times people decide, but uh, being lazy, they don't even see. And some people uh, would never like to see it again. So you can choose whichever questions you have in mind. So these questions will remain on the on the Facebook page and the YouTube page. You can select whichever question you want to use it. So with this, uh, now we first go to Dr. Abhijit Patil, who will give the uh, overview of various video platforms. And then uh, we'll go to Rajiv for the um, what is ideal uh, uh, website or uh, ideal video uh, uh, conferencing platform. So over to you, Rajiv TP. Others can keep uh, keep in view. Keep in view. Uh, many thanks, sir, uh, for this uh, opportunity. Uh, so. Uh, So uh, there are uh, different uh, video conferencing apps available in the market. Uh, initially, it was Zoom, Cisco, Webex, and GoToMeeting, and uh, then slowly came Google and Teams. And if you want uh, uh, make in India, Atmanirbhar Bharat, it is Say Namaste or it is a Geo Meet. So, <clears throat> some disclosures: I am not a professional IT. Facts presented are to the best of my knowledge available on the internet. I am not a promoter of any video conference company. The features that I tell you are dynamic and they keep on advancing by time. So uh, to start off with, let me give you some idea regarding what is meeting and what is a webinar. These are two completely different concepts. Meeting is an interactive session between small number of people. While webinar, it is like a virtual hall or auditorium. It involves large number of public. Uh, so meeting is like office meeting, casual meeting or training sessions, small training sessions. Webinars are like lo uh, launch events, large conferences, uh, especially in meeting you have host, a co-host and a participant. While in webinar you have host, co-host, panelists and then there are attendees who are just attending it. They can uh, type in a question, they can participate in a poll, but they cannot participate into that webinar. Uh, screen sharing in a meeting is available only uh, to all participants, uh, while in webinar it is not available to the attendee. Meeting is generally up to 1000 people, webinar can be up to 10,000 people. And if you want to have some uh, money making idea, integration can be done into a webinar and not in meeting. So coming, uh, let me tell you about the user interface about uh, uh, Say Namaste, uh, the first Make in India app. Let's see uh, how it is done. So on the, it has to be done through a Google Chrome browser. Uh, it, it has option, you schedule a meeting or a start meeting. If you start a meeting, it will ask you for a name. And uh, when you start it, as you can see, it takes quite a long time to start a meeting. And once you are in the meeting, the details uh, is when you click here, you can have meeting uh, details. When you click here, you can have chat details. You can switch off your call, your video, your audio. And here you can share your screen. 
so share screen has an option uh, let me show you uh, in, when you share screen if you want to share an application like powerpoint it will not be able to share your audio system audio when you want to share your system audio it has to be an entire screen or a chrome tab so that is one caveat in say namaste so as you can see when i click uh, entire screen you see the share uh, screen audio while when i click application video uh, it will not be seen and uh, that's all it doesn't have much uh, features uh, and you can see just the participants and it's quite a basic uh, form of video conferencing app now let's go to some uh, a, uh, a bit sophisticated indian uh, video conferencing app which is zoom mate it is just launched new uh, uh, here you can see the audio settings so uh, you can see it's a basic audio settings are here in general uh, very basic uh, general thing like enter full screen ask me to confirm before meeting add zoom to start a video also you have basic uh, uh, settings which are available audio also and profile just on uh, just the basic uh, setting that you can do on uh, google uh, me uh, geo meet sorry so when you go into the participants uh, uh, they have uh, quite some good uh, opportunities like uh, you can unmute a, a participant or you can mute all or you can force mute all that is a very good thing when you are having a, a meeting so you can mute someone if you click more so you can ask to start a video or you can remove him if a, a person is creating ruckus in the meeting you can remove him so you can invite someone you can uh, mute all or you can force mute all that is what you can do in uh, geo meet so and you can even lock the meeting so these are the some features of geo meet which uh, you can mute all force mute all you can share things and as well as you can lock meeting and you can remove some participant out of the meeting these are the some of the features in uh, geo meet let's come on to google meet so what does google meet does if whenever a person wants to join uh, the invitation through a google meet is always through a link so you send a link either to whatsapp or a mail to someone and the person on the other side uh, just clicks the link and gets into the meeting and then when he gets into the meeting uh, the administrator either admits him or denies him entry into the meeting so here as i click admit there are uh, uh, very limited features which are currently available in google meet which are if you see if you click here you can we will have a meeting details where you can click it and send it to people uh, here you can switch on your off your audio you can uh, switch off the call or video setting you can start or uh, uh, close the options so you can you can have live captions in the uh, google meet and then uh, if you want to share screen uh, you can uh, you have a option of sharing your entire screen a window or a chrome tab so here also the caveat is if you want to uh, have the system audio you cannot uh, select a window and have a system audio if you want a video with an audio to play you have to click a chrome tab and then uh, you can have a google uh, a youtube uh, uh, audio you can listen to it or you have to upload your video onto a cloud and then uh, share through it so as you can see you doesn't have it doesn't have a uh, system audio option and now some uh, interesting features uh, that uh, google meet is uh, has uh, the chat is a basic thing in uh, participants also when you see you can just pin the video you can ask him to unmute you cannot unmute him and you can remove him out of the meeting that uh, that are some basic features that uh, google meet has well other features which uh, google meet uh, has uh, good is you can you can change the layout of the uh, uh, meeting like you can have everyone on the sidebar and the main presentation of your spotlight video you can just have tiled uh, this is a, a good uh, feature in a google meet rest uh, you have a quite basic videos uh, basic features only uh, one thing if you buy a higher version of google meet you can record the, the meetings on cloud and also we can live stream it to around 10000 to 1 lakh people but then the caveat in it is that these people have to be in your domain so it is quite difficult to have the email addresses of all these people added to your domain now coming on to the next platform which is microsoft teams so first i'll uh, show you the user interface of teams software in itself so it is uh, it is an altogether uh, software where you can uh, engage with all other people on various platform various ways 
like you can create a team uh, which you have the people's in it then you can uh, share your files where people can collaborate lifetime collaborate into their files you can have chat you can make a team you can uh, schedule a meeting so when i click a calendar uh, i have uh, uh, just a second so when i go to a calendar i have two options i can click meet now or uh, i can schedule a new meeting or a live event so <coughs> live event you can uh, have a meeting like uh, three four or uh, people are in the meeting and you can show it live to 10000 people that is the benefit of it and when you have a team created you can just click meet now in the team and all the people in that uh, team can just meet this is uh, one platform which we had used uh, during our crash course that we had we had 150 people in the uh, in a team and then we used to meet twice a day and we just used to uh, meet now and all the people used to join here you can have the live event where you will have the meeting and then uh, the 10000 people will be able to see it and uh, if i want to show you the uh, latest uh, features that uh, teams has this is the uh, new uh, teams uh, user interface that they have launched now so when you click into the meeting so now uh, this invitation into a microsoft team is also through a, um, a link so when you click the link you can join through a browser or you can join through your application so here you can uh, you can click your name meeting with whatever name you want to type you can have your video you can click your video you can uh, audio and also you can have various background settings that you have so in this uh, new feature uh, you can have n number of uh, background features like virtual background whatever you have and then you get into the meeting you can change your name and then you can uh, join the meeting and once you join the meeting there are various uh, features so this bar used to be here now they have shifted it to uh, uh, the right up corner so when you click on the participants so uh, the, you have various features into the participant like you can uh, mute him you cannot unmute him you can just ask him to unmute uh, while uh, no, you can remove a participant that is uh, you can do it and here you can raise your hand uh, these are the some of the features that you have in it then if you go into the more uh, features so these are the basic uh, audio settings device settings that you have uh, what more you have is uh, in gallery you can have four people at the same time but they are coming up with this large gallery features where 49 people can come together and they are just coming up with this together mode i will show you at the end of this meeting and then you can start recording you can have live captions so these are the some of the very good options you have in teams and then as you can see when you uh, try to share uh, share screen you have n number of uh, options like you can encrypt the system audio you can have a window you can have a powerpoint you can have a, 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 a whiteboard so you have n number of features uh, present in the team so they have come up with very good features in current time now coming on to the next platform which is go to meeting so this was quite a, this is quite an old uh, and robust platform which is present and uh, this is the free version which i am showing so you uh, can see the information about the meeting over here you can lock the meeting over here you can record the meeting here but since i am using the free version i cannot uh, show you you can uh, this is the audio video share screen mind you then uh, share screen you can just share uh, entire screen application window but you cannot share the system audio in go to meeting i have tried uh, quite a lot but i couldn't find a way to share the system audio into it now if you see uh, some other features you can have, have full screen and then you can again uh, change the layout of your everyone who's talking uh, active cameras if they are 40 50 people and only 10 people are active so you can have active cameras uh, now here it divides into the organizers and attendees and then it decides uh, what are the uh, features that you have to give to the attendees so you can make him presenter or you can excuse him that is you can um, uh, move him out of the meeting so that's all uh, the features that you have in go to meeting now coming on to the next platform which is zoom so probably everyone knows about it uh, many of them um, must be using it but this is, a, this is a recent update of zoom which is 5.2 which is recently come and uh, now whenever you have to use to use password it used to be a numeric password now they have converted a term password into passcode and you have a alpha numeric difficult uh, 
meeting passcode that is just to improve the security and now <coughs> sorry so this security what they have shown is that there was some skepticism about the data being routed through china uh, server so now they show you that the data center that is being used is through united states and they are using advanced encrypting system uh, which uses a 256 bit uh, system so they show you these features now they have they have n number of features so if you try to uh, see is uh, there are many features which uh, so you'll slowly get acquainted to it many of which may not be useful to you in day to day life but yes they have these features so now in this video feature what have come up new is that you can enable hd you can touch up your appearance you can decide how much to touch up the appearance now the new feature they have added is adjust for low light so uh, you can decide uh, so whenever we used to see that the light conditions are not correct so now it will itself uh, adjust for the low light and then you can display up to 49 participants at a time <coughs> and there are many other uh, video features which generally we don't require it there are also many audio features which actually not much is required but now they have two things that is you can suppress the background noise it, it will use an artificial intelligence and it will try to suppress the background noise suppose a door a window is open and the other thing is echo cancellation so by artificial intelligence it will try to cancel the echo to whatever extent it, it is possible again share screen you have a number of options in uh, available chat also you have many options available some of which may be useful may not be useful uh, again coming on to the background uh, this uh, whatever virtual background that we know they were present from the beginning but now we have something new which is video filters so you can apply some video filters while you are talking uh, so yes yeah, you can see you can click any of this uh, uh, video filters uh, which is a new features which has come to the zoom and then you can have recording you can record to a local uh, so computer or you can record into the uh, uh, cloud system uh, then profile statistics keyboard so shortcuts and accessibility so these are the uh, many settings uh, that you can do in uh, zoom now coming on to the uh, uh, security features that are new is that when you have created a meeting and you think that all of your participants have uh, come to the meeting you can lock the meeting so anyone with user id password even if he has a meeting id password you can he cannot enter the meeting can enable a waiting room where uh, people can come uh, and then the admin will decide the host will decide whether to take them into the meeting or not so uh, the the problem with zoom uh, was zoom bombing so what the people used to do is, is that they used to speak something in the meeting they used to share something into the meeting or uh, they used to chat some racial things or some uh, bad things with the meeting so now you can allow participant to share screen chat rename themselves or unmute themselves so by all these features you can prevent zoom bonding uh, zoom bombing which used to happen so now it is uh, clearly up to you how to make your meetings secure so then uh, if you come to the participants what more features in zoom you have is that when you click the participants uh, sorry uh, so when you keep, uh, come to the participants you can mute all you can force mute all and this again you can decide ask all to unmute uh, you can mute participants upon entry uh, allow participants to unmute themselves if you unclick it then the participant will not be able to unmute themselves they will not be uh, able to rename so why these features have come that rename themselves is that now if someone uh, comes into the meeting and uh, it, they re they'll rename uh, as Abhijit Patil so if they re uh, rename as Abhijit Patil then the host will uh, not be able to understand whether to give me the authority to share or not to share and by mistake if they give the authority to the other Abhijit Patil then uh, then he'll have his time good time and he'll try to share everything so that is why this feature has come up whether allow the participants to uh, uh, rename themselves in the meeting and again you can have chat you can chat privately to someone you can chat with everyone you can share anything and you can share anything from your computer as well as uh, from the cloud and uh, the only feature which uh, probably zoom is is that you can share multiple uh, participants can share a screen at the same time uh, then uh, you have uh, multiple sharing options you can share computer audio you can optimize the uh, video for it uh, then you have uh, various sharing other options you can share the file even through cloud so as you can see zoom has n number of features now we come on to our last, uh, last uh, platform which is cisco webex oh uh, i'd like to uh, uh, tell you 
that majority of the features that you find in the Zoom, you'll uh, find on this uh, platform. If you click here, you will uh, see all the meeting details. <coughs> and uh, here you have n number of features. Again, you can open and share something. You can, so one uh, good thing about uh, WebEx is you can have poll in uh, meeting itself. Generally, Zoom webinar has the option about it. So you can open chat, open poll questions. You can save your chat. You can transfer, you can print your chat. You can send meeting transcript to people. And when you come to preferences, uh, you can, uh, I mean, uh, if someone has uh, put a chat, you can uh, hear a beep sound on it. Sorry. You will hear a beep sound on it. And um, uh, so if the participant join meeting, leaves meeting or raises hand, you will have a, a sound on it. You can share your content, share your web browser. You can share multimedia. Uh, if you come to the, you can have a full screen. Uh, if you come to the participants, uh, you can see that it is secured through SSL. I'll tell you in uh, further slide what is the encryption uh, details. Uh, you can have uh, n number of features which you can see over here. And then if you go to the further uh, option, you can change the layout. And then audio, you have audio connection, you have a speaker, microphone details, you can change your virtual background, you can connect to a device, you can mute, unmute yourself, you can force mute all others, you can unmute all, you can mute him on entry, on entry exit, invite someone, you can, you have to you decide whether uh, who can present, you can assign privileges to a participant, here you can start recording, uh, you can have a welcome message, and also you can uh, live stream <coughs> to YouTube or Facebook. One thing about Zoom which I missed is that you can live stream it to YouTube and Facebook, but that feature that you have in a paid version. Uh, uh, also, this uh, version of uh, live streaming is also available in Cisco WebEx in the paid version of Cisco WebEx. So you can log the meeting also. So as you can see, majority of the features that you had in uh, Zoom are also present in uh, WebEx. Now coming into the others, this is uh, audio, video, you can share screen and in share screen, as you can see, uh, you also have this optimized for text and images, optimized for motion video. You can share a screen, you can share multiple other options, you can have a whiteboard. Now coming on to it, you can record a meeting, you can, you can in the participants, you can decide. So uh, you can change the role of any participant uh, to uh, just a second, I'll, I'll, be come, I'll come back. So you can change the role to presenter, host, note taker, or closed captionist. You can you can mute, unmute all. You can move him to the lobby. Lobby is waiting room. So you can move him to the lobby. You can expel him out of the meeting. So if you're creating any problem, you can expel a participant out of the meeting. So here also you have n number of security features to prevent uh, attack on your meeting. And uh, here you can have notes, you can have polling in your system, you can lock your meeting, so you can have n number of poll questions, you have answers to it, you can decide the time duration for your poll. And then uh, coming on to here, you can live stream, you can invite, invite someone, and that is n number of things that you can do on Cisco OX. So as you can see, there are many uh, uh, similarities between Zoom and WebEx. So I tried to find out why, why it was this. So I came to know that the Eric Yuan, who the person behind Zoom, had actually pre pre uh, created a video telephony software way back in 1987 for his lady love, for which he, he has to travel 10 hours journey. So then what did he do is, uh, upon arriving in US, uh, Yuan uh, joined Webex. Webex was a very small company at that time, which had only 20 people, and he was one of them. And then the, in 2007, actually Webex was sold to Cisco Web uh, Systems at 1.2 billion dollar. And then he soon became vice president of engineering. And then he, in 2011, he had a new idea of smartphone-based video conferencing system, which was not taken well by the company of Cisco. And he had a spat and then he left Cisco to establish his own company, uh, Zoom. Uh, and to his surprise, it was a very big opportunity waiting for him and he soon became a billionaire. So uh, these question, uh, this question comes to many people's mind is, is Zoom Chinese? So why did this question start on Fortress itself? It was, this was an editorial in Forbes uh, journal, which is a very uh, well-noted journal. This was a study done by uh, two cryptographists, which is Bill and George uh, Scottson. They are, they are from a Toronto-based citizen lab. 
and what did i find is uh, when you make a call from a person to other person it is routed through a server so if you make a zoom call from alice to bob it will get routed through a zoom server so uh, when your data is encrypted that is it is if it is kept safe it is a mutual understanding between a client and a server so they uh, create a key which is useful uh, for encrypting the data at alice end and decrypt at the end of zoom router and then again from the zoom server to bob so this key is very important this is where uh, in the cloud your meetings can be decrypted they can be stored they can be recorded so what did they find is they made a call from us to canada and the key uh, for this meeting was created at beijing china so this was a big problem so if they thought why should a call from america to canada should have a key created in china so uh, with that key it can be decrypted whatever meeting you had can be decrypted so this was the crux of the problem <coughs> and then uh, other issues were he was born in china but then he is in america since long uh, also other thing is the zoom has been expanding in china it is going from 500 employees to 700 in a space of a year uh, the citizen uh, lab uh, dug further and found handful of companies owned by zoom operating under the name of ruanshi software in china and also they found that this uh, the encryption keys were generated in beijing and uh, zoom itself told that we have a high concentration of research and development personnel in china which could expose us to the uh, market scrutiny regarding the integrity of our solution and data scrutiny and then what happened finally zoom themselves accepted that the call got mistakenly routed through china now we don't know the truth behind it was it an intentional or what is was it a mistake but now what they have rectified is that now paid versions can have uh, an option to select the data router uh, i mean uh, the server through which the call get uh, will get routed so they can deselect china from their uh, various servers and uh, when we come to uh, the ban in uh, ban of zoom in india ministry of health affairs said that this is the official letter which said that the platform is not for you for use by government officials and for official purposes so the we have seen one side of the coin the other side of the coin is uh, is zoom really chinese if it would have been then government of india banned 59 chinese app why was not zoom being banned so the other side of the coin is that it is an american company founded by a chinese american citizen it is based in california it is listed in american share market but still uh, despite of many qualification uh, many in india continue to believe that zoom is a chinese app this was an article in news 18 paper but still majority of the indian cyber uh, security Uh, centers say that uh, it should not be used for government if you use for personal use you should follow certain guidelines to make your meeting safer so then why did zoom became so popular this uh, this was a my thing uh, why is it so popular so it was a popular thing uh, to start off with in 2011 uh, 13 they created the platform and by 2019 it was itself a hit uh, platform but then then came this pandemic and it exponentially increases use Uh, the, the why was it success in before is that various other platform first focus on audio calls and then they shifted on to video calls zoom was one platform which actually focused on video calls first and the other thing was it is very cheap because the free version gives you majority of the features that you require 100 participants 40 minutes you can share screen you can save uh, uh, you have the same video quality you can record the meeting So if you have all these features, then why why do you have to buy it? So majority of the people uh, made the benefit of these features. Whatever, if you after forty minutes you can have a new meeting, doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, they had many easy meeting and ID password, just a, a single number. I mean a number uh, which you have to enter as a meeting ID and password. But all these things actually boomerang on them itself. Uh, and other thing is that uh, good customer service and uh, through word of mouth uh, we i had a meeting on zoom it was very good then other i'll tell you other people and through all this it uh, <laughs> became a success <coughs> now this question arises in many people's mind what is actually the bandwidth required for my meeting so uh, if you see this i uh, have searched through a majority of this video conferencing apps website and the requirements for them is that Uh, if even if you are sending highest possible hd videos it requires 3 mbps up and down so whenever you are presenting a video or a webinar it has to be upload speed rather than a download speed download speed is important for the person who are just listening to it 
so 3 mbps is quite okay if you are even if you are sending hd videos uh, but if you have a high uh, quality video in it uh, that if you are sharing that you might have to increase that up to 10 mbps while coming on to some future advances uh, just to give you what is together mode and how this video conferencing app will change our um, uh, future i'll just a uh, short uh, example about it. it puts your team in one shared space microsoft so ai helps together you it. It. Let me so uh, uh, you can see you can have a board meeting where all the participants are sitting for coffee breaks. and have various layout meetings for your next call and then yes. here comes you can have a class so for every day get together to important meetings be together even when you're apart this is about microsoft all the features uh, for 90 days and they are focusing on 90 days only on security issues google meet is coming up with noise cancellation and many more features in thanks you that was just an introduction of all the video conferencing app thank you sir well uh, <clears throat> thank you patil I think it was not an introduction, but it was a complete overview of everything. And uh, I think you have given a very nice overview of all the platforms. In fact, you gave lots of details of the various video conferencing platforms. Now, having understood that, very, very important aspect is that why we are using all this uh, video platform is for our educational activities. Most of the times, it is that is the purpose. And as we have seen in last four months, the US has taken a very, very aggressive step. They have taken so many activities and which are, which are uh, appreciated so widely across the country and even at the international level that US has done a superb job by doing so many meetings, so many webinars from the education point of view. Well, as uh, we know that we have Dr. Raji TP with us, who is the dynamic US secretary. And now since last four months, he knows what actually the problem, what he is facing when he is doing all these webinars, what are the requirements, what he thinks is the most ideal platform which a, a institute or a, the association like USI should have, which will take care of everything. And let us hear from him as to what is an ideal virtual platform for the educational events, a perspective from the academic society like USI. So over to you, Dr. Raju TP. Please go ahead. Raju, you can go ahead. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes, please go ahead. So thank, thank you, sir, for your kind words and, the, and also for the opportunity given to me to talk on, today on a topic, uh, an ideal virtual platform for educational events uh, in our society's perception. Next. Medical community relies, next slide. Medical community relies on conferences, congresses, symposia, and other live meetings with the basic aim to share new scientific information to engage with each other. Next slide. Next. So, to have a brief history of webinar. Webinar is a good alternative to, for, for conferences and web seminars. Webinar is a blend of web and seminar. It's an event held on the internet, which is attended exclusively by an online audience. These webinars were started at the end of 1980s and by mid 1990s, web chats, instant messaging apps were developed. Next. It was in 1995, PictureTel announced the launch of the LiveShare Plus software. First public web conferencing was done in May 1996 with, due to the efforts of Microsoft team for the launch of NetMeeting. The trade webinar is owned by Intercom. Next. There were different types of webinars. Next. These are training webinars. Next. Educational webinars. Next. Business webinars. Next, recorded webinars and live webinars. Next, next, 
And we as an educational society is basically concerned with educational webinars. One factor is that till recently, most of the webinars using various different platforms were held by the financial institutions or pharma, pharma, pharmaceutical companies. But of since last few months after the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, many educational societies were conducting webinars, which were usually earlier held as CMEs, workshop, and other things. And when you take the statistics from March 2019, it has been found that in the last few months, educational webinars has become one of the prominent webinars, which is competing with the financial institutions as well as the pharma pharmaceutical companies. Next slide. So these are the various available platforms. Already Dr. Vijit Patel has given a big good overview of the various types of platforms which are available at the moment. Next slide. So now, like COVID pandemic, there is a pandemic of webinars. If you look back before uh, December 2019, there were hardly around 10 million uh, audience. But now, within the last six months, it has exponentially increased 24 times with a thing around 200, 200 million webinars. Next slide. So, what is an ideal platform? What are the characteristics for an ideal platform? An ideal platform should have good audio and video quality, easy screen sharing system. It should be very viewer friendly. That means it should be very easy to join the webinar. One should be able to record the webinar and they should, they should have, it should have good audience interaction features like chatting facility, polling facility, as well as file sharing facility. Over and above, there should be a NAND security and should have the facility for scheduling of the meetings. Next. High quality audio and video is one of the important features for an ideal platform. Why? Because it is very important for web conferencing. Users should feel like having authentic face-to-face -face conversations. And there should be additional features like noise cancelling, auto mute for non-speaking participants, and setting adjustments for users with low bandwidth. Next. Screen sharing is another important characteristic. It should be high quality, easy to toggle on and off, and there should be option for multiple screen sharing. Next. Multiple device support. It should support multiple devices like laptops, mobile phones, as well as tablets. It should be quick and easy dialing for meetings. Easy to use interface that the partnership should be able to join in an with very ease and in a quick fashion. Setting up of meetings and managing them should be very simple for the host. Next slide. There is one factor known as bombing or web raiding. This has already been highlighted by my previous speaker. This is in order to prevent unwanted participants posting lead content unwanted disruptive intrusion by internet trolls and hackers and how one should prevent it that is keeping meeting private don't share your passwords other than the fora where you want to have the meeting then limiting screen sharing access there should be have the facility to admit the people who want to sneak in if you don't admit, they will not be able to sneak into the meeting platform. Next, USI, apart from all other things, USI is having a Facebook page live. This has been started earlier, but it has been more active since June 2020. Members can watch live or later through this thing. 
can have discussion by chatting. Then <coughs> due to Facebook privacy policy, there is a big disadvantage is procedures on urethra or genitalia cannot be displayed. This is one of the basic disadvantage of the Facebook. Otherwise, we in the USI, even though we stream through one platform, we interlink with Facebook so that our members can <coughs> at a leisure time view through this, this recorded event through the Facebook. Next. Next. What are the points to consider therefore before selecting? How many participants can be permitted? Do you want multiple video feeds uh, visible on screen? Will you need screen sharing, annotation, group chatting, rooms, and other collaboration tools? How good is the application like Microsoft Outlook and PowerPoint? Do you want to record your meetings? And if so, how much cloud storage will you require? What are the safety protocols and the cost effectiveness? These are the main points one will consider before one selects an ideal platform as a violated. So all these matters are taken into account before one selects an ideal platform. Next. So USA's experience, since the end of April till end of July, USA had 30 webinars and one full day virtual congress over uh, these webinar platforms. Most of our webinars were held on Zoom platform. To an average, we had more than 500 participants. And in our one day youth congress, we had near about 1200 participants. We link all our webinars, we stream to USI Facebook page, live as well as USI YouTube channel. Many national and international speakers are involved in our webinars. Till date, we have not found any, no major glitches. There has been occasional difficulty in screen sharing by some speakers, but it has been um, nipped at the bud itself. Rarely interrupted video when the bandwidth was low. Next. This is a bar representation of USI ISU webinars. Around, I had said, 30 webinars have been conducted till end of July, and our average audience were 785. Next. To conclude, webinars are future of conferences and meetings. These are eco-friendly, has got wider accessibility. It is cost-effective vis a -vis physical contrast. Next. Next. So when webinars will be the new normal. There are various options available now, as has been highlighted by the earlier speaker. But one has to choose the ideal platform based on the points I have highlighted. But till date, everyone is in search of an ideal platform. And to satisfy each and every need, till date, an ideal platform is yet to come. In our limited experience, we feel Zoom is a better platform. Next. So the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. With these few words, I end my presentation, and thank you all for your patient hearing. Well, thank you, Rajiv TP, for that uh, very nice uh, presentation. And this is actually what we were expecting from you, that when you are a secretary, what are the things which are there in your mind when you want to have the webinar? As you said, rightly said that the webinars are going to become new normal. And even when the, the, uh, everything opens up, maybe one year, two years, three years down the line, so in some part, the webinars will continue. And as of today, as you have rightly pointed out that Zoom is the best one, but we also take it from you that new uh, or the best is yet to come. So let us see whether we can find out some best uh, 
uh, platform which is there at all or not in the subsequent lectures. So thank you very much. Next, we go to Dr. Nitesh Jain. Nitesh Jain is not a new name here. He is now well known. He has started a, a Facebook page of uh, uh, Alto, which, is, which has done a tremendous amount of work in organizing various webinars, taking up questions, discussion of the cases, and so many things like that. He technically is very sound, and he, he knows what are the requirements of the people, how the things can be done in the Facebook page, how it can be streamed to the uh, various other platforms like uh, uh, the YouTube and things like that. And he's going to tell us that when you are actually uh, organizing the webinars, what is the role of social media? Because as we know that we have a Zoom, but we always take the uh, advantage as Raju TP also said, that we need to have the advantage of uh, Facebook or a YouTube or USI TV or something like that. So he is going to tell the, uh, the relationship or the role of social media in the video conferencing. So over to you, Dr. Nitesh. Uh. First of all, I would like to thank Sabni sir for the opportunity. Well, today my topic is video conferencing and social media. My two previous speaker, Raji TV sir and Abhijit have made my part a bit easier. Uh, Dr. Abhijit have told us in detail about various platforms, video conferencing platform and the, the need for video conferencing or webinar by Rajiv sir. So to start with, my disclaimer is I'm not an expert and whatever I am presenting today are my own views. There is no conflict of interest with anyone. So with this pandemic, even the world are not spared. We have seen the world leaders are doing video conferencing and already most of the world leaders are on social media. They have got huge followers. So if we take social media, three major platforms, YouTube, Facebook, and WhatsApp, but if you see, Facebook is leading the race with almost 2.5 billion users. And if you see, most of the people almost spend three and a half or more than three and a half hours on mobile. And of this, 50% of the time is being spent on social media. So in the COVID times, more than 76% of the people have admitted they have increased their users of mobile phone. So whether the pandemic have started the pandemic of another webinar, but that's not true. Webinar was started way back in 1990, 1980 with real time text messaging chats. And in 1996, audience polling, chat participation, everything started. And Webex in 1999 actually started webinar for almost 1000 people simultaneously. So well, webinar in urology, that again is a not new term and it ne never started because of pandemic. Again, I have to say, we in U Ulte, a Facebook uh, group started way before pandemic. Of course, it peaked in lockdown period and many major association actually followed us. We started way back in Jan January to 2020 and early journey with us was not very easy. We had our own uh, share of difficulty with speakers doing all sorts of yoga to live stream on social media. Even we had our own technical glitches and our speakers reshot the entire thing and he, they have uploaded on Google Drive and link thanks to our speaker taking all the pains. And this is one of my slides from UCCon Kochi 2020, where I spoke about impact of Facebook in clinical practice. And there I said, probably the future conferences can be attended at comfort of home. But who knew? Just in less than three months, almost the major association like American Urological Association, European Association of Urology will do a virtual conference. So virtual will be the new norm, probably, yes, as Ajit TP sir have said and have highlighted very nicely. So why actually a webinar? Why actually we do live streaming rather than webinar? I will just tell you in brief. Basically, we need to decide what audience we are expecting and how far we want to reach and what are our goals. So webinars are best when we want to keep the event private 
and we don't have, want our content to be immortal. In digital world, everything, whatever you post is immortal and it will lie there forever. So in case if you are doing some pet services or tutorials, probably this is not the uh, live streaming is not uh, your cup of tea. There are a few copyright issues of some surgical or innovation which we cannot do on uh, social media platform. In case if you want to give CME points, certificate of participation, then probably we cannot do on Facebook or any other social media because we cannot have a proper track, track of people who are participating actually, unless until we have pre-registration, but again, some people may join late as we have a spot registration in conferences as well. So when actually we need social media, when we want to maximize our reach the, and we want to make utilize our existing viewers and believe me, the shareability is much easier in social media as compared to any other platform. Social media has its own impact. Facebook and YouTube have the largest viewers base and it is the place where most of the people are. Advertisement is much easier and we know if you send a mail or a text message, either it lands up in a junk mail or the messages are unread. So most of the time, uh, whatever we text or message does not reach to the people at the correct time. WhatsApp is a close uh, group and it has got restricted number. Event handles like in Twitter, like reminder and a doc meeting plays a very important role in scheduling the meeting and reminding people about the meetings. So there's a lot of innovation which goes in live, which is going in live streaming and it is probably one of the most effective tool for business marketing and for communication in near future and major features are added very frequently. It also adds more to the excitement. Just believe, just see, uh, just make a difference between a live cricket match and the highlight match which we watch. We of course like the live cricket match. Engaging is of an audience is much more easier and much uh, better in a live platform and, uh, as compared to a captive audience. Audience shareability and invite are much easier in a uh, social media platform. Ulti actually it doubled in less than six months after starting live stream. Live streaming on social media also acts as a video marketing because it has got its own SEO benefit. Live viewers are equal to one video view. So every minute which is being watched to over, also as to the overall watch time of a recorded video. Audience retention and viewership is one of the most important algorithm which YouTube uses. And if it is being streamed on a website, it also adds to the organic traffic off. So there is a lot of excitement when we stream live. It also gives us ease easy push back, uh, push notifications. So whenever we are going live, we can hear uh, the Facebook or YouTube does the job for us and easily they've sent a push notification. Unlike in webinar where we don't get any push notification and can be done only in small groups. We don't have to search for link because it is there only in a particular platform. Feedbacks are more authentic because they are given live rather than having a feedback form from the uh, people and viewers are more glued. So live streaming, of course, it is free and it has got endless possibility. Webinar have got premium services. Of course, it also adds to the exclusivity to your invitation list. And last, the other important factor is removing the barrier. Most of the time we are reluctant to download a special media like any other um, uh, medium. So the for the viewers, of course, for the viewers, they don't want to download extra application on their mobile or laptop. So if you are doing through one of the social media, which is most likely will be there in their phone, it is much easier. So it also have got its own production value. So we can have on demand videos. It is useful for the viewers when they are from different time zones. So the video is saved there on a uh, social media and it can be viewed later on. Unlike a webinar which have got this on. Suppose if we are starting a webinar now, the time in US is almost seven o'clock in the morning. We'll not have many viewers from US or Canada, but those viewers can very well watch it later and just like a live video after a few hours. So our reach can be more global if you are on social media and integrating questions in live session makes viewers feel as if they are involved. 
So between two major platform, Facebook and YouTube, how to choose? First, we'll see how native we can go live. Ulta actually started uh, uh, streaming with the inbuilt platform of uh, Facebook. But the major disadvantage without using Zoom or any other in, um, video conferencing medium, we started with Facebook itself. But we faced major hindrance like the face touch was lost. And in uh, at the beginning only we had to make a choice whether we want to share the screen or we just want the speaker to be there. We cannot toggle between the screen when we are doing direct inbuilt live and it needed a lot of training. The speaker had to be completely on Facebook, which many of the speakers were not comfortable with. So what about YouTube? YouTube does not allow live, uh, does not allow si uh, screen sharing. PPT presentation cannot be done. And it is very difficult to thread multiple speakers there. And in YouTube, we cannot form a closed community like a Facebook. And in case if you are going to do a live, uh, a live streaming via webcam, then we need minimum of 1000 subscribers on YouTube. So learning from our mistakes, we got a lot of feedbacks and we used to get a lot of feedbacks and we learned from our uh, mistake how to improve. So as scarf is not the ideal mask, so is the integrated life. So we moved on to the next platform. So uh, what actually uh, uh, we never wanted some platform uh, where users have to download a platform and they have to see. We wanted a platform where they can watch easily and the speaker can be there in one platform. So the team Ulte was formed way back in Jan, uh, January 2020 with uh, Dr. Anil, Dr. Tanuj, Aditya and Rahul. And we worked on. So teamworks makes the dream work. So let us understand why the marriage was necessary between a video conferencing and social media. So why we needed to amalgate with social media? We actually avoided downloading a new platform for the viewers uh, because understanding a new platform both for the panelists and attendees is very, very difficult. The advertisement on social media is far reached and we already have a pool of audience there on social media. So we should not lose that opportunity. Uh, so a pre-existing audience is already available. Managing both panelists and attendees on a video conferencing sometimes can be difficult because we may have a lot of difficulty. Of course, uh, off late, many new safety features have come in most of the video conferencing media. Most of the people are different time zone, so they can have a de uh, on demand view of the videos on social media, unlike we can do on a video conferencing. And of course, the cost. Initially, we started with streaming medium like OBS, but we had our own. And it was very difficult for the uh, people to learn, and it took a lot of uh, uh, rehearsal before we could do live. We had our own problem. Even PGs also did great job in learning, and they also have presented seminar way back in February. But we had our own problem. Sometimes because of the large bandwidth, the internet was not good or lag time. So many of the webinars were not relayed uh, properly. And sometimes we failed to save the entire session by using a different platform like XSplit. So we Googled and we tried to use many different platforms, right from OBS, Wirecard, XSplit, IAG, Switcher Studio. Name a platform, probably we would have used it. So but we just wanted to find out different platform and what, no, how can we do? Because at that time in March, no one was doing actually video conferencing. So how actually to choose the best platform? We need to, what actually we want to accomplish. What are our target audience? Do they have a different time zone? Which platform is most user friendly? And is that platform is safe enough? That security concern is a major thing. And does the platform have the basic features of screen sharing, PIP and chat box? Of course, for us, since we are a self-sponsored group, so cost is a major factor for us. So what were the driving action for entire this was we just were focusing on two things of one from a speaker point of view, other from the audience point of view. If a speaker wanted a video conferencing medium where they are less disturbed, and which is easy to use. 
audience want used to love a social media because they were having it on their mobile and they hated downloading an extra app so most of the platform actually you know, offers as we have seen abhijit abhijit have already said ki most of the platform actually offers all the basic uh, uh, features so the few major video conferencing platform are your microsoft team webex and zoom so if you see microsoft team does not allow live streaming but webex and zoom allows so zoom and webex have got good uh, review uh, good reviews also probably we can choose between webex or zoom in case and today we are doing from one of this platform webex so between webex and zoom not much to choose uh, from of course zoom have got little more features as compared to webex but zoom also is more user friendly as compared to webex pricing not much of different the basic uh, model of the zoom actually have got 100 participant as compared to webex so it is little more cheaper as compared to your webex so for uh, when we compare the various social media platform there are only two media which offers a uh, live streaming of video for unlimited hours one is your facebook and youtube others media we cannot use so we have to choose between these two only initially we started with e easy talks but we had our own problem we we actually opted for this media because it was a little cheaper than uh, compared to other platform and it also had the same features and easy to use but we had our own pro own problem during one of the major meet so we switched over to zoom so one of the major week we got this message ki we are not able to start and in a hurry bury we have to buy zoom and because we already had tested many other platforms so we like zoom and we started the zoom meeting so zoom we bought the basic version so in case if you're buying a zoom and you're going to relay on a social media just go for the basic version which is very very cheap it's only 15 dollars per month and you don't have to buy many hosts just a single host is more than enough so the basic version is more than enough audience if you planning on social media the audience can be on social media zoom basically is for only for the faculties and so that the disturbance is less so with this we started the era of virtual conferences and we also had with the zoom meetings another we could actually on social media can divide the hall into hall a and hall b just like any other conferences so we are simultaneously running even two and three talks simultaneously on social media and people could choose whether they want to see a overactive bladder or a rirs online polls were also created in between the sessions so suddenly on one day we realized the need of youtube because artificial intelligence is very crude all genetically images are flagged so this gave the birth of youtube ulte fb channel and streaming was better with no censorship provided we kept the video for over 18 years so video conferencing app at, uh, usually most of the video conferencing app have some restreaming app in it built in restreaming that I already showed but those apps are very very basic and they can stream only to one platform the layout cannot be changed and the highlighting of the comment on the screen cannot be turned and we cannot switch between multiple camera and microphone so we to avoid those things we can do actually multicasting what is known as live streaming to multiple channels so multicasting can be done there are various app available for multicasting like restream switchboard live manicam and many others multiple platform can be uh, streaming can be done on multiple platform the advantage being a wider reach but multitasking is not everyone cup of tea the major disadvantage is we, the moderation we need to follow up questions in different media right from facebook on your website youtube so you need to follow up each and every question in different media so moderation is a big headache you, keep, you have to toggle between different uh, platform the questions cannot be taken up completely sometimes the voice and video quality can be affected and there can be some out of sequence delivery may occur 
a few other hardware based tools which i'm not going to go into detail they are usually a high end dedicated tools have got more features and uh, something like they can uh, um, stream better high definitions uh, videos and switch over is possible so what ex actually is a ideal platform is a single unified platform what i feel is a ideal platform is a single unified platform with a single layout share which can which allows share present presentation seamlessly and multiple screening sharing is also possible chat and take up live question one to one from the speakers we also have a time check many of the talk actually exceed beyond the time that's the major people complain ki usually in webinar the time is not kept properly is where in a media we can create poll quizzes and multiple talk can be done at, uh, at the same time like a sub specialty meet we can also issue certificate cme points and in case if you want to start some paid services it can be done and of course we can reach a wider pre existing audience rather than creating one more new audience with this i conclude uh, my talk and probably you can have your out being observed this is the privilege can only happen in this virtual world thank you thank you sir thank you nitesh i think that was a wonderful uh, presentation and you have rightly pointed out that the social media now in this era at least cannot be neglected upon even when it when we talk of the teaching and training the social media has to be taken benefit of i think that's a very very important message which you have given now let us come to the next uh, talk which is by dr jishan who is the associate professor in uh, kmc manipal and he is going to give a very important talk as we know that all said and done so many platforms even though they are there the commonest used platform all across the country all across the world is still zoom and in zoom also there are many people <coughs> who face problem there are problems in sharing the screen there are problems of uh, the uh, sometimes the presentation doesn't come sometimes the the person actually who is the faculty sees the screen but the others cannot see there are many pro uh, problems which come up so he is going to give us the overview of the troubleshooting in zoom which is the most commonly used video platform or the video conferencing uh, webinar which is used so over to you jishan please go ahead thank you sir a uh, very good evening uh, in fact good night and uh, greetings from manipal I'm grateful to Dr. Sabni sir and team MPUH for giving me this opportunity. And my topic is quite simple right now because most of the things are already covered by all the previous speakers. And I'm working as associate professor in Department of Urology at KMC Manipal. So it's purely educational. I'm not an IT expert, and I have no conflict of interest. Uh, 2020 started with a big bang. We had the most awaited UCON 2020, where we could listen to most of the wonderful lectures. We could deliver some talks and also meet our friends. Then came a small, tiny virus we could not see, which changed the whole physical conference into virtual or webinars. So briefly about the history, all these webinars, portals, and the uh, idea behind this started after the Second World War, when people wanted to have a telecommunication uh, emergence in telecommunication sector. And uh, it was Plateau, which was started by University of Illinois, where it was more of a, a web-based chat system. Then uh, Windows started LiveShare and uh, Microsoft started Net, uh, net Meeting. It was in 1999 when WebEx was uh, built and then it was acquired by Cisco in 2007. The breakthrough was in 2011 when Zoom started and then afterwards everything is history. Zoom is actually a web-based platform which provides uh, video telephony and online chat services through a cloud-based peer-to-peer software platform and is used for teleconferencing, telecommuting, distance education, and social relations. It was started by Eric Yuan. Unfortunately, he's a Chinese, but uh, then he became uh, an American citizen. And because of that one particular reason, there are a lot of uh, issues happening around Zoom. But uh, to reinforce, uh, Zoom is a Zoom is not a, a Chinese uh, a portal, it's truly American because it's based out of uh, California. So we did a couple of uh, surveys during uh, the lockdown and we asked the uh, Urology Society of India members whether which was the most common portal what they use. And most of them said that Zoom is the one what they prefer for webinars. 
And this is the essentials which I always keep around during any webinar, my laptop, and I make sure that my uh, modem is right in front of me because something goes wrong, I can always, you know, uh, check and correct it. And you should always make sure the charger is kept closer and you always charge your laptop so that, you know, there is no uh, uh, discontinuity of the webinar and keep your handphone in hand uh, and also make uh, headphones and also make sure that you have a book and pen to note down and make sure you have your phone in case you have to commute or uh, communicate with any of your uh, uh, speakers or conveners, but make sure it should be uh, in silent mode so that, you know, it doesn't interfere with your webinar. So as Abhijit rightly said, 3 Mbps is the speed what is required anything slower than then can be uh, uh, catastrophic for a webinar. But if you want uh, effective uh, screen sharing and if you have a high a definition videos to be on safer side it's better to go up to 10 mbps because that will make sure there is no lag in any of the video sharing make sure you have proper light and uh, there is no noise around stay in a calm uh, quiet area where there are no kids there is no uh, movement of people and also one more important thing is don't switch on your ceiling fan when you are using uh, you know when you're talking because it can give a background noise we also asked another question to all the USA members, which is average speed. And we were happy to tell you that most people had a good number of speed that is more than five to 10 Mbps uh, of speed in their internet. So keep a UPS so that uh, there is no, uh, whenever there is power fluctuation, your modem should be connected to your uh, UPS so that there is continuity of internet. Make sure there is ambient lighting. And if you want to check your speed, you can all, all, always go into one of these uh, websites where the speed will be shown. And uh, have a proper workstation where you sit at ease and uh, listen to the whole webinar and you can talk. In case if you don't have a table, you can have some of these tricks. You can use the uh, iron board as a table and you can adjust the height of the table. So which are, what are the common problems? The common problem is mainly the starting problem then regarding the internet and power. Chat pranks can be there. Uh, sometimes there will be issues with uh, video, audio, echoes, and some main important problem is most of the speakers would have faced is uh, sh sharing the screen, background noise, and then unusual zoom bombing and annotations by audience. All these problems will be, uh, I'll, I'll go through all these problems and I'll, tell, I'll bring a solution for this. So to get started with Zoom, it is a free Zoom account which you can go through and uh, it's always uh, easy to download. And uh, uh, you don't need an account if you are a participant, but uh, some of the uh, webinars, they ask you to identify yourself. So better to have an account and it is free of uh, cost. And you can join the, any of the meetings with using the username and uh, ID and password. So how to connect you? You download the Zoom app. Then afterwards, once uh, software is downloaded, you just have to click on the exe file and ins install it. After installing, make sure that you know when you are joining any webinar, you have to join with the video on. And once the uh, once you join, also make sure that you join with the computer audio on. These are the important two steps steps when you are joining as a participant or a speaker. And once you are in the uh, uh, room, make sure that you know you unmute it when your talk comes and mute it when others are speaking. And also share your uh, start your video so that others can see you. So to schedule a meeting, it's very simple. When you go on the Zoom page, uh, this page will appear. It lasts for either scheduling or meeting. Once you click on it, you'll have various options like the date, date, time, and whether you want the host to have the video on or the participant to have a video on. Once you click on all this and generate a, a, a meeting schedule, the meeting schedule will appear like this, like somebody's inviting, and this is the link. If you click on it directly, it will go to the Zoom, or you can share the meeting ID and password. This whole thing can be used in the clipboard and can be shared in either any of the social media platforms. So once you begin the webinar, make sure that you know, these are the security features which are very important. I'll come through it, I'll, I'll go through it uh, uh, in detail later about locking the meeting, enabling waiting room, and allow people to share screen, chat, and rename themselves. So what is the difference between Zoom and webinar? This, this was uh, in detail explained by Abhijit. So I'll just tell three features which are very important. In a webinar, it's a, a Zoom webinar is actually a paid service. It's quite premium. And here the host can control the uh, audio and you can unmute and mute selected people. But in case of meeting, you just, you can mute mass as in all the people can be muted by the host. But here you can selectively mute and unmute. And here you can have, send email reminders once the registration is enabled. 
And also, the very important feature is if you're conducting a virtual conference or a webinar and you want it to be paid, you can integrate with the PayPal and you can collect money for your webinar. This is one important slide which uh, you know which I've gone through many a times because of uh, heavy rain and fluctuations. Sometimes there is no power and there won't be internet connection. So to be on a safer side, if you are a host and if you are going for a subscription of a Zoom or platform, make sure that you know you go for uh, two hosts. In case if I have some issues, the other host who is in a better place with better connectivity and power can still continue, and there won't be any discontinuity in the webinar. And this is one uh, unusual thing which we came across during one of our USI webinars. This was a webinar where when I was a speaker for uh, uh, bladder cancer, there was somebody who had logged in because this Zoom link was uh, extensively advertised in the social media. And then person started sending all lewd messages and abuses. So by doing this, uh, there will be some uh, discontinuity in the webinar. There will be apprehensions. People think it's a, a hack, but it is not a hack. It is just a chat prank when somebody's sending some unnecessary messages. In order to avoid this, it is very important that the host goes to the settings and block that personal user. Once you block the personal user from sending a chat, then they cannot send any chat. And also you can remove that person, which I'll show you in, in my future slides. So another issue is my video camera isn't working. So most of the laptops are uh, camera integrated, but this issue occurs when there is a, a desktop with a camera which is attached. So in order to check, you have to click on your profile, picture then the camera will be shown and you can always check whether the camera is working or not in case there is any troubleshooting you can always go to the uh, video section and once you go to the video settings you can check what camera is there and if you didn't, don't see any camera that means uh, the camera is not connected to your hardware and you have to connect it again in case still there is any issues it's mainly because of the hardware issues so you have to change the camera yeah, another important thing is uh, my audio doesn't work. When, whenever you see the audio doesn't work, click on the audio tab and keep it on if it is muted. And uh, other other issue is the microphone issues. When you say that you know uh, you you uh, you you are speaking, but somebody else cannot hear, this issue can be sorted by going to the settings. In case of iOS, there is a privacy setting where you have to get permission to use a microphone for this application. Similarly, in Android, you go to the settings and check for Zoom, and in Zoom, you have to get permission for using the microphone. Uh, important feature in Zoom is you can check your test, uh, you can test your speaker and even mic by clicking on the audio tab, and this will help you in checking whether your audio and the speaker are working or not. If there is a lot of echoing, a lot of echoing occurs when there is two, two uh, instruments which are kept close to each other, like if you have a computer and the telephone, both the audio will interfere and there will be a lot of echoing. You have to make sure that one of them will be off. Make sure you're logging in with only the computer and keep the phone away. This is very important. Most of us have gone through this where we cannot share the screen. To share a screen, you need to have a very good internet connection, ideally 10 Mbps, if you have a, a PowerPoint with a lot of videos to share. And make sure that you start with no video at the home tab, so that only the sharing part will be available there. And if you're already on a call and need to share your screen, try turning off your video by clicking the stop video button. So you'll have only the uh, uh, PowerPoint which has to be shared and keep your uh, video uh, button off. And also make sure there are, uh, the internet is not using any other uh, application on your computer. So this is how we share. Uh, before you start sharing, make sure the content what you want to share should be on the desktop. Only that should be on the desktop. If it's a PowerPoint, only keep the PowerPoint on, don't keep any other uh, material on your desktop. Once the PowerPoint is on, then go to your Zoom. Once you click, once you log into the Zoom, there is a tab which says that uh, share screen. Click on this share screen. Then you'll have various things which will have, uh, which will uh, appear: whiteboard, PowerPoint. So if I want to share my PowerPoint, just click on the PowerPoint and then click share. By doing this, you will have the PowerPoint which will appear on the Zoom tab. And once that is done. Uh, make sure you click on uh, slide share. Once you click on this slide share, the whole PowerPoint will appear on the full screen, and this is how you share your screen. Once your PowerPoint is uh, presentation is over, make sure you stop uh, sharing by clicking on the stop share screen, so that the next speaker can go in for uh, sharing his screen. Similarly, in Keynote, uh, the same uh, 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 procedure you have to go through, but make sure once you click, once you share the screen, you Click on the play button on Keynote and the Keynote will appear on full screen. This is a short video on how to use uh, Prezi because uh, Prezi is one more fancy you know, uh, presentation which uh, off late has taken a lot of importance. A lot of people are using it. 
It's a web-based uh, presentation. Once you log into Prezi on your browser, uh, once you log into your account, make sure that you know you are going through all your presentations. The one you want to share, click on it. Once you click on the presentation, it will appear on your screen. So the presentation here should be on before you start sharing. And uh, once the presentation is on, you go back to your uh, Zoom Zoom uh, box, which is available on the top corner, and enlarge it. And after enlarging it, click on the share screen button. Once you start sh sharing, you have to click on which of the, any of the Prezi presentation which you want to present. So even after this, if you're not able to share screen, one important thing which you have to keep in mind is sometimes when the host is uh, host setting would have uh, reserved a sharing screen only for the host. So if this is the problem, then the participants cannot share screen. So either he has to share, change the share, setting on his uh, uh, on his Zoom account, or he has to make sure that you know make you the host so that you can share your screen. And another important thing is Zoom also has multiple sharing options, which uh, will be too complicated to discuss here. Sometimes you have too much of background noise and it is annoying. To avoid uh, background noise, make sure that you know you mute all the participants. This can be done when you're uh, scheduling a meeting itself or after the meeting has started, you can, there's an option for mute all. And Zoom has an AI-based uh, new technology where it automatically suppresses the background noise and even the intermittent noise, also avoids any echo, uh, presence of echo in the background. So what is zoom warming? This is uh, uh, an annoying feature, which annoying thing which happens once in a while. It's uh, when you have some unexpected visitor join on one of your meetings and start sharing filthy messages and videos. To avoid this, you need to update your Zoom app so that you have a latest version and you always ask people who are speakers to have their accounts, uh, uh, make, make an account so that you can identify them. Also, abstain from sharing your Zoom meetings ID publicly. Most of our uh, uh, webinars these days are restricted only to the speakers and uh, moderators and uh, viewers have usually a third party streaming device. So make sure that you know you don't share the Zoom meeting ID and also keep the ID strictly for speakers and moderators. So here you can see there is an unusual person who has uh, attended this meeting. To avoid this, once you have the meeting, what you have to do is uh, before when, when you're scheduling a meeting itself, you have to click on uh, authenticated users to enter and also enable waiting room. Because by doing this, you can selectively see who are the people who are attending and you can either accept them or remove them from the meeting. So in this meeting, which I had organized, I, I had a person called Zisha Nami who was a, a participant. If Since I know him, I had to admit him. Otherwise, I can always remove him so that there is no Zoom bombing. So once you do that, uh, you click on more uh, option. It will show option of lock meeting. And once you lock the meeting, no other uh, no other person can enter the meeting. In By doing this, you can avoid any kind of uh, Zoom bombing. Another important thing is there is something called annotations, which is used for a lot of interaction. People on your presentation can mark and can speak, uh, write some things. But this at times can be annoying. To avoid this, you can disable the uh, attendee annotation option so that there is no confusion. Uh, this is very important. People would not want to see what is uh, in your room and what, what is happening. This ha usually happens when you're in the hospital, when a lot of people are around, you don't want them to be seen. To avoid this, uh, what you have to do is you need to go for a virtual background. This option is available on your Zoom screen. Once you go into your uh, account, you have to click on virtual background. There are already a preloaded uh, posters which you can click or you can have your own pictures which can be loaded and that can be used as a virtual background. Um, another important feature of Zoom is it makes you prettier. It makes sure that you know you yourself will appear much better and there will be blurring of people uh, or things behind you and makes you look more prettier. This option is not available in any other platform. Uh, when we have a webinar, make sure that you know you raise your hand by clicking on this tab. So that you don't, uh, there's no, there's no, uh, there's not much of uh, you know interference during other stock, and this is one of the etiquette which we have to follow. And uh, recording a meeting is very important. If you are planning to record, make sure you take permission from all the speakers. This is one of uh, important uh, thing, so that you know people are aware that you are recording their meeting and you are sharing it. Take their permission before in hand. And we also asked in our survey uh, whether people are happy with the recording without the permission. Most of them obviously said that you know they are not comfortable with recording of lectures without the permission. 
And another important question what we ask is whether people are anxious about privacy. The majority of the urologists said that they are anxious because there are a lot of you know messages and a lot of uh, things are being spread about Zoom. They had some issues with the encryption, but, uh, encryption, but uh, as uh, Abhijit rightly said, nowadays the one which the uh, Zoom account which I have taken, it's a paid service, and uh, they made sure that the data center is in Europe. So these are end-to-end -end encrypted, and there will be no uh, loss of uh, uh, privacy breach. Thank you all. Thanks for this opportunity. I hope I cleared most of the doubts. Thank you. Thank you, Zishan. I think that was an excellent coverage of the problems which can come in and the solutions which you have provided. I think uh, most of us are using uh, Zoom and all these problems which you have faced and which you have narrated actually are being faced by almost every one of us. So I think this will be very, very useful for all of us to uh, listen to that again and again when we face the problem. So thank you very much for that uh, overview. I'm sure you must have taken a lot of efforts and a lot of time because the way you have narrated, you have identified and thought of almost every problem and you are given the solution. So thank you very much. Well, now we go to the last talk, which is a very important talk. Now, having heard all these lectures, actually we have seen that there are advantages of social media, there are advantages of Zoom, there are disadvantages of Zoom. There are various other platforms which are there. Now, lastly, we come to Dr. Abhijit Patil, who is going to compare all the video platforms which are available. And as per our requirement, at the end, we need to conclude as to if we have decided, as Raju TP narrated, that yet the best is yet to come. So which actually comes to near best, that is what we need to understand. That is what we need to know. And uh, Patil is going to cover uh, the various, uh, do the various comparison of the common video platforms which are available. So over to you, Dr. Patil. Now, before we are, before I ask Dr. Patil, there is the, there are poll questions which are there, which uh, we will close uh, very soon. The poll questions are there in YouTube. The poll questions you can see, uh, you just have to click that poll question and the, it will open up a new uh, window in your uh, mobile or your uh, laptop. And you answer those questions. Very simple. It will take half a minute for that. And those things will be recorded. And at the end of the, his lecture, he will give you what exactly is the people uh, who have uh, given that, uh, what is the uh, poll uh, result. So I think this is one of the important uh, aspect which uh, Rajiv TP and uh, the Nitesh also said that taking a poll is very important. Sometimes there are some, some certain important questions which are likely to come up. On the spot, you should be able to take a poll. And that is what uh, we have tried to do it here, that we have put this question on the YouTube and the audience can give the uh, whatever questions they are result which they want to give it and will give the graphical form of the result at the end. So Patil, please go ahead. Well, thank you, sir, for this opportunity. Now we have a uh, lots of uh, video conferencing apps. So now how do they compare and which one uh, do we select? So uh, again, a disclosure, the best of my knowledge, I'm not a promoter of any company and the features are dynamic. So now how do we compare them? So the first aspect is the cost, then the video quality features, and then the security features. So the cost is say namaste and geomet is currently free. Uh, coming on to the other platforms we are, which are free versus paid, the free version of it uh, gives you, Zoom gives you 40 minutes, WebEx gives you 50 minutes, Teams and Google Meets are currently un unlimited in this pandemic, go to meeting is 40 minutes, uh, Zoom has 100%, WebEx also has 100%, Teams and Google Meet have 250%, go to meeting has only 3%, screen sharing is allowed by everyone, and recording in a free version is allowed only by WebEx and Zoom. Now coming on to the uh, paid versions, uh, if you want to have Google Meet's higher version, so you have these facilities of record meeting and uh, live streaming to in-domain uh, viewers if you take the higher version. Well, coming on to Microsoft Teams, whatever the basic uh, thing you have for 660, it will allow you to record meetings. But if you want to host uh, events up to 10,000, then you will have to take a higher uh, pack of it, this. Coming on to GoToMeeting, <clears throat> The cost of it is 1,000 rupees, around 1,000 rupees per month 
and uh, the, the professional uh, thing of it uh, gives only 150 participants and if you have to buy a business version of it it will cost you around 1450 uh, per month and it is uh, around for 250 participants and then it will allow you to uh, unlimited for cloud recording uh, transcription uh, the the thing they have is uh, whatever uh, meeting you have it will transcribe the text into it and uh, if it de detects any uh, presentation in it it will automatically convert it into a pdf coming on to zoom so zoom has majority features free so why do you have to buy zoom so you have to buy zoom for around 11 28 rupees per month only to have unlimited meeting and live streaming so but uh, this 11 28 will give you only 100 participants if you have to have 1000 participants in your meeting you will have to shell out around 8000 rupees per month and if you take a business version of it which is around 1500 per month will give you an access to 300 participants so as i said majority of the features that you require are present in the free version of it uh, but uh, the meeting is limited to 40 meeting uh, 40 minutes so you have to buy it for unlimited meeting and also to live stream it uh, uh, that is the thing now coming on to Cisco Webex, the 1260 per month version of this gives you all features. It, it, it has 1000 participants, you have unlimited number of meetings, you, have un, uh, you can record it, you can live stream it, you can do everything. It is 1260 per month, the caveat is you have to pay an annual subscription, you cannot uh, take it for per month. So based on cost, uh, all these paid versions, I, I think, uh, uh, majority of the people uh, they are using the Zoom a free version of it for small meetings and if uh, for uh, the higher meetings they are using this pro version which has 100 participants and they live stream it to social media and the Cisco I found it very uh, economical. So now to compare it on the video features what I did is I took a HD uh, video with voice over and using the same internet connection I recorded it uh, and uh, I'll show you how the different apps uh, uh, streamed the uh, video content of it. So this uh, is a say namaste uh, as you can see uh, there is you cannot hear the sound of it uh, the sharpness is quite okay but uh, let's see uh, how it is so as you can see there is some frame loss and there is some jerkiness in the video so now coming on to the next uh, which is uh, geomit so in geomit if you see again uh, you cannot hear the sound you can see there is some jerkiness uh, but uh, as you can see there is some sharpness in the uh, video as you can see here there is a sharpness in the video, but still it is jerky. There is loss of frame, uh, loss of frame rates in the GeoMe. All these all softwares don't have option of uh, optimizing the video. So now coming on to the teams. So what it is? In which there can, are strategically uh, placed posts to enable audio. exit of urator and vessels uh, through the mob. You can hear the system. The advantage of using and, the mob uh, is also, that the layer of you can see, uh, inverted is, uh, uh, man. quite sharp and a fenestry. And uh, if we go here. There is hardly any uh, pre-frame loss, so it is, it is quite good. So here is the bladder, piece of mob in which... So coming on to the Google Meet, here the, the whatever we see, we cannot have system audio. So if you want a system audio, the, the video is slightly jerky, uh, though it retains its sharpness. So it is sharp, it is jerky and doesn't have a system audio. As I said previously also, if you want a system audio, you will have to go through uh, Google Chrome uh, tab as you can see here again it is a bit uh, jerky over here so now coming on to go to meeting if we see again in go to meeting you cannot share uh, the system audio if you can see the video is quite sharp but again, I could, uh, I thought that uh, the jerkiness, the, the video has some jerkiness and the smoothness is not up to the mark. Coming on to the uh, uh, platform which is Zoom. And is to avoid bladder injury during environment. The video as seen is in this quite sharp and as Still hanging see, to the, end the video number. is quite smooth. But uh, then we have to select, uh, uh, optimize the so video is the when you are sharing the screen. If you do this, so it is, will as a result, while giving.
challenge is to avoid bladder injury again we will come to the last platform which is esco webx challenge is to avoid bladder injury as during see, the video is as seen in this card sharp. and as we come to this video in this first case the bladder was not properly taken down so, and was still but seen hanging to the end rail of the video so when you optimize the video it uh, it decreases your so here is the resolution to bit uh, low but it uh, increases the number of as a result while giving the panel stability and see clamps were released the surgeon challenge is so to now, avoid bladder uh, this was the video quality on all them now we'll let uh, we will compare the features of everything so as we can see virtual background you can have on microsoft teams uh, and in cisco webex and zoom a, a, a enable hd is almost everyone has hd uh, i couldn't find about say namaste touch up appearance currently only zoom has it uh, participants name on video is everyone has it lock meeting uh, go to meeting cisco webex zoom and geomeet can lock meeting it is very important nowadays and uh, enable waiting room is already uh, is uh, present in all this platform except uh, uh, say namaste coming on to the further uh, features a uh, share is uh, available to everyone chat uh, so uh, you can in google meet and uh, in geo meet you can only chat you cannot share files in it uh, if you want to mute all you can do it only in microsoft teams go to meeting cisco webex zoom and geo meet force mute force mute is also a very important thing Uh, so then, uh, uh, if you have a large meeting, force mute all is very important feature. It is present Cisco Webex, Zoom, and Geo Meet. Unmute all is present in again Go to Meeting, Cisco Webex, Zoom. Uh, unmute a participant is also uh, present only in Cisco Webex, Zoom, and Geo Meet. Sending bank into waiting room nowadays it is present only in Cisco Webex, uh, uh, Zoom, uh, uh, and uh, Geo Meet. Uh, you cannot uh, send back them in waiting room, but you can uh, remove the participants. so remove the participants is now present in almost all the platforms except uh, say namaste uh, mute participants on entry uh, it's almost everyone has them i couldn't find the answer for google uh, meet uh, rename participants uh, zoom allows it but again uh, due to security is now they also uh, give the uh, control to the host whether he wants to allow it or not coming on to the screen sharing multiple screen sharing is available only with zoom uh stop sharing by host is available only in zoom this is a very important when the uh, the preser uh, the present is not uh, well versed with the software the host can just stop sharing uh desktop application can be shared with everyone share uh, computer sound is only uh, available in google meet if you use a google chrome tab uh, and it is available in cisco webex and zoom uh, optimize uh, for videos it is available in cisco webex and zoom Uh, share file directly from cloud it is present in teams it is uh, present in cisco webex and zoom raise hand is present in teams uh, cisco webex and zoom annotations is available in microsoft teams on whiteboard only and here you can uh, in go to meeting cisco webex you can annotate uh, in on everything uh, recording is uh, done locally in go to meeting cisco webex and zoom while you can uh, uh, record on cloud on uh, meet also meet teams meet, majority of them except the geo meet and say namaste don't have the recording facility now what if you can live stream live stream only two platform gives you the option of live stream which is cisco webex and zoom uh, you can number of participants on a screen so this is a very important features google meet now have increased it to 16 microsoft team currently supports 9 and would soon be 49 go to meeting is 25 Cisco Webex is twenty five, Zoom has forty nine, Geo Meet is fourteen, eighteen for desktop and four for mobile. Uh, polls is present in Cisco Webex, uh, but it is present in uh, Zoom webinar and Go to webinar. Number of participants in meeting Meet and Teams is two fifty, Go to meeting it is three uh, for unpaid to two two fifty and three thousand. Cisco Webex can be uh, extended and Zoom can be extended up to thousand. Geo Meet is for hundred participants and Say Namaste is for fifty. a uh, duration of meeting i have said uh, adjustable layout it present in google meet uh, go to meeting uh, cisco webex and zoom so these are many features as you can see majority of the features are present with zoom followed by cisco webex so now the other thing is the security issues so security issues can be divided into network security which is encryption meeting control which is zoom bombing and how to prevent it as uh, dr jishan has already told about it and our problem we share our meeting id and password everywhere in social media it is our problem not zoom's problem or any uh, meeting platform problem if you share your user id and password your bank account even if you share for bank account it is bound to get uh, uh, robbed so uh, what is encryption is a method by which your information is kept secret 
uh, and uh, there are two important protocols which are present just a technical about it the uh, transport layer security which is used may day in and out in your every uh, thing which you have a, you as, as a client and you have a server so what it does is that uh, it sends you hello and then uh, the server recognizes it's a hello and there are some exchange of public key and private key and then a master key is created uh, and that is shared between you and the server and that is how your meeting is secured and that is what the problem is when you share a secret key all your data is present into the server so now that was the problem with zoom that does this key which is created has to be a uh, uh, secure key and should be not be routed through any undetermined uh, server and then when you say about end to end encryption there is very much now this term into we should have end to end encryption we should have end to end encryption so this is uh, available only with cisco webex as an uh, add in features uh, and also zoom is working on it and it would be available in a beta version so what is end to end encryption is that the uh, message created from alice it will be encrypted at at uh, its end and will be decrypted directly at bob at its end it cannot the, the message cannot be deciphered by the server so it is encrypted end to end so no one in the loop can uh, see or read the message so it is the best uh, uh, encryption but there are some loss of features as i will tell so uh, the keeping the functionality and the most important internet uh, protocol is the tls uh, protocol so and then uh, you have algorithms to secure a uh, uh, meeting and that is uh, the best thing that you can have is an advanced encryption system which majority of the softwares good softwares use it and the zoom is now saying that we use this uh, system which they were not initially using it so this protocol uh, this algorithm uses a key which is used by uh, your you, you as a client and a server and now it uses a 256 bit so these are the uh, possible uh, co uh, combination that you can have with that key and if the best uh, the super computer also will take 885 quadrillion years to uh, decipher that key so it is quite secure so now only security issues you can have is uh, uh, whether the server uh, is with the servers and not through the transport uh, systems so what are the security system that uh, ma uh, majority of the app users say namaste they say it is encrypted details are not given geomit say it is secure details are not given so google meet says that in when they, uh, the uh, call is being made it uses the uh, tls system uh, again uh, when we see about microsoft system it is server to server it is mutual tls and client to server it is again tls go to meeting also uses tls and address it uses the aes as i said zoom also now it uses the tls and address it uses the aes they are trying optional end to end encryption cisco has already has an end to end encryption so when you create a new meeting in cisco webex you have an option of end to end encryption so but when you say the end to end encryption is very good then it comes with some problem why the majority of the softwares were not end to end encrypted because when you use end to end encryption you lose the features like using personal room meeting can join before the host video there are very uh, various device uh, enabled meetings uh, you cannot join through web app uh, you cannot uh, share uh, save the videos uh, you cannot share, record the meeting you cannot take the notes you cannot have a transcript because the server will not have access to it so whenever you are you think that your meeting is a, is a very important meeting and then you use a end to end encryption if you want very uh, high functionality then you avoid this end to end encryption so uh, coming on to security these are the security ratings given by federal government of usa and it says the cisco webex has a moderate level of impact level zoom they have given moderate but it is zoom for government not the uh, regular zoom google has high microsoft has high uh, and again the microsoft has both high and moderate now uh, how to make the meeting safe this has been uh, the given in detail by dr jishan before meeting enable waiting room uh, have uh, now passwords i uh, know now passport the alpha numeric don't share them with anyone and uh, you can optionally allow only authenticated users to join in when you are in a meeting allow only confirmed persons in the meeting you can control the privileges audio chat share file annotations recording so that they cannot boom into your meeting mute participant turn off their videos remove if, if they are creating a problem remove them to a waiting or just them throw out of the meeting don't allow the participant to rename once they are in the meeting these are the ways we can you can make a meeting 
safe. So to give the verdict, uh, uh, instead of I giving the verdict, let's have the verdict from the world's best uh, research and advisory company, where all the companies uh, rely on it to have insights. So what uh, they release this as an every year, uh, they is known as Gartner Quadrant. So this is the latest 2019 quadrant and it says, what is leaders? Leaders have significant influence and market share related to the competitors, uh, where they demonstrate an ability to respond to customers need. Leaders are robust, scalable meeting resolution with a wide range of features and they are doing well and are prepared for the features. So now who are the leaders? It is Cisco, Webex, Zoom, Microsoft Teams and Logmein that is go to meeting. And you can see the, the, the to the rightmost thing is the Cisco Webex followed by the Zoom. And now to compare it, it they have divided into four types of meeting that you have. So first is an internal collaboration where you have just a small one-to-one -one meeting or small interaction of only 50 participants. Cisco Webex was rated as the highest with 4.55 followed by Microsoft Teams at 4.45. Coming on to a leaning learning and training that we use for day in day out as a doctors is that presentation tools that allow part instructor to share content, ask and answer question and assist participants. Cisco Webex was the highest with 4.6 followed by Zoom at 4.38. Uh, if you have just an external presentation, just a simple experience, easy in the out, you have 10 friend meeting, you have your marriage. Uh, you have to share a party uh, which has to be very simple then the zoom does it very well it is 4.63 followed by cisco webex at 4.6 and if you have a webinar where you have large audiences that demands platform that uh, and should have various presenter controls and then your viewers should have polished experience then cisco is again at 4.7 followed by zoom 4.55 so, uh, and let's see what do government organizations uh, uh, do, use. So this was a meeting by, by a, a respected prime minister with the cabinet and I see they are using Cisco. Then uh, we had a recent uh, uh, meeting uh, of US Congress on uh, some the tech giants in the world. This is Jeff Bezos, Amazon CEO and see they are using Cisco Webex. And also you can see Tim Cook, uh, this is the uh, uh, recent uh, uh, US Congress uh, meeting with all the giants of the tech and they're using Cisco Webex. So take home message is that as you can see from the rating, if you want to use it for general use, it is Cisco Webex versus Zoom. It is a personal preference, but I think on if you want uh, to be a secure uh, platform, you can use a Cisco Webex. Also, it is, uh, quite, uh, quite, uh, it is quite cost efficient. If it is you are using for institutional use, majority of the IT companies, they use Microsoft Teams nowadays or Google Meet is also trying to come into the picture. But majority of the tech giants in the world, if they are institutional based, they use Microsoft Teams to have their meetings. Uh, if you want make in India, Atma Nirva Bharat, then I think GeoMeet uh, is a very new platform and it is trying very aggressively to come up high into the market. I would like to acknowledge Dr. Navin Reddy, who is a resident with us, to help me out in this uh, presentation. And well, thank you for this uh, talk, sir. Well, thank you, Dr. Patil. I think you have given an excellent comparison. And this last talk was really icing on the cake, that you have really compared almost every feature, what is required from the uh, viewer's point of view, what is required from the, uh, the speaker's point of view, and what is required actually for the security concerns, what, what things can be done. Well, I think most of the speakers have done a fantastic job. We have a few questions, but uh, those questions you have already answered in your uh, talks. So I will request Dr. Patil to give us the result of the audience poll. Let us have the audience poll and related to the audience poll, I will give some of the questions to, the, uh, to all the speakers. I think this was an important aspect of the audience poll and Dr. Patila was quite confident that we can take the audience poll on the on the platform and that is how we have done it. So please give me one by one question and what is the answer. So the first question I think is that do you prefer to attend the webinar on social media or be the part of the video conferencing? I think most people, uh, how much percentage? 72. Uh, 72 people have said that they would like to have the uh, social media. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so I think uh, this is the eye opener. We thought, I think, I thought that people will prefer the, uh, the conference through the webinar. 
but most people are quite comfortable with the uh, the, the social media and as uh, dr nitesh rightly pointed out that social media you cannot neglect now nitesh i want to ask you one question yes sir to this uh, related to this uh, audience poll which has come in yes sir uh, you rightly judge that the people nowadays prefer social media now do you think that people who want to ask questions uh, is it comfortable for the faculty to understand the questions uh, which are coming up from the social media or which are coming up actually from the zoom video uh, meeting i felt that on the zoom video meeting whatever chat questions are coming up are easy to read rather than when you are on the zoom and you are sharing with the with the youtube or facebook it is sometimes very difficult for the faculty to concentrate on the question uh, rather than on the meeting itself so what is your experience and what do you think about it uh, what uh, we are doing of late is we are having two moderators in our meeting so one okay. of the moderator actually take up all the questions and he intermittently as the talk goes he keeps on asking the question second most of the panelists we ask them to have a look on the uh, website also because we keep only the faculty there we don't have the participant there so right. the, the faculty can have a watch on the question which is coming up on the meet either they can straight way answer we have seen faculty answering as the talk is going on or they can take up as the talk, uh, talk uh, as the session and uh, proceed further yes so i think that's a good idea that either you keep it on the website or the moderators definitely can do that job which they can read it and then they can pass on to the faculty so that's right what is the next uh, do you think uh, personal asking questions in the meeting is better than asking question in the chat box uh, yes uh, is by 79% so most people would like to ask questions themselves i think that is very logical that uh, the person who is attending the meeting may like to ask question himself but as we have to find out what is the best we have to have the balance of both it cannot have everything ideal so i think coming uh, to the chat box also should be acceptable to that all the people that wishes are definitely there the next question is that kindly rate the security concern of zoom for your uh, privacy one star being the less and five star being the uh, highest so people have given uh, what rating uh, 3.63 almost 4 3. Point, almost 4 so four rating is by most people so i think people still have the concerns about the zoom i think uh, zishan and everybody pointed out what are the real concerns whether they are really concerns or not and uh, abhijit patel also actually said what is encryption and uh, how to uh, how to overcome that uh, jishan one thing which i want to ask you that patel has given lots of things about the encryption how it is being routed to server and this so the people who have given this concern since you are also on this troubleshooting of zoom uh, do you think the concerns which actually people have as of today just now are they real concern or they are just the uh, concerns which actually are not real what do you think about it sir actually there is a concern as abhijit rightly said when the server is kept somewhere in all your uh, uh, conversations now we are having more of educational conversation so it doesn't much matter to us right. but if you are having some uh, conversations at uh, you know government level or a, a thing which you don't want others to know about it then there are actual concerns and these concerns right now are mainly because of the media which has been highlighting more uh, poor light on right because of uh, you know being chinese or the person being chinese the server being in china they are trying to address this but uh, i think this is mainly because of that people are having concern but if you actually look at it if you are using this for any uh, any of these government agencies or you want in, you don't want any of the content to be leaked then it is actual concern okay i think that's a very very rational thing which you have told that when we are doing it for the educational activity i don't think there are uh, much concerns in fact uh, we record it and release it on the social media for people to see so there is nothing to secretly uh, the uh, servers are in china and all those things the government for their official meetings have banned the uh, zoom probably that's the reason why they have banned it because uh, there is no end to end encryption and uh, people uh, the servers if they are in china 
they can decrypt it and that can be the big concern for the security point of view but from the education point of view i don't think uh, we need to have any concerns uh, about it so the next question is that do you do you have if you have the equally uh, user friendly platform available do you like to shift away from zoom uh yes is uh, blue is by it is yes so i think majority if it is uh, equally uh, user friendly platform uh, they would definitely like to uh, shift away from zoom i think this also is probably the perceived perceived concern of the security and uh, which probably our training may not be real concern people uh, may want to shift it probably as zishan has rightly pointed out the social media has created really a big security threat or is there with this zoom but that is not there now patil you have done lot of research on this security one question yes, i want to ask you and which actually was raised by none other than our past president uh, dr madhu agrawal and he said that uh, when he was using zoom he had real concern which he thought that it's a real concern that Uh, after using zoom uh, his information or some secret information from the laptop was probably leaked and that is what he thought so do you think that it is really possible for someone to leak uh, so answer this uh, it is not completely the, the zoom application that is responsible for it but it are the, there are multiple malwares and adware that come up with an uh, application Uh, through which the hackers can gain access to your uh, computing system and can uh, leak your information so the thing is ki it, it it has been uh, seen in many cases that hackers had found out a way where through a zoom meeting they could uh, enter into your computing system and leak some data yeah, uh, and there was also a concern that uh, zoom is sharing mirror uh, some of its data with facebook there are many many things which are available on internet which says that they had access but every time uh, they had an issue zoom is actually trying to give an update and trying to uh, uh, solve that problem so the one uh, uh, advice from zoom is that keep on updating their zoom uh, updates rather than being on an old uh, zoom version but uh, it is uh, not uh, just because of zoom it is the uh, entry of malware or adware through the zoom into the computer which through which they get an access sir so i want to ask one quick question related to that uh, when this uh, hackers uh, enter uh, somehow through zoom application uh, is it uh, the same way they can easily enter into webex or any other platform or for that platform it is bit difficult uh sir uh, uh, the the main problem with zoom has been because it has been into the limelight and that is why zoom bombing has been very much into it uh, uh though if we see if we search on internet they have been glitches with other platform but um, uh, nowadays it is only highlighted uh, on zoom uh, but and if you have an end to end encrypted meeting a single meeting uh, then it is very difficult to hackers to get into it sir okay all right thank you thank you So last question the uh, audience poll was that do you think that you see the recording of the webinar later on if you miss it the options were uh, yes uh, i i have the recording and i see uh, the second option was i decide to see but i generally most often don't see it the third option was i like to see but i lose interest i start and i lose interest after some time and the last was i never uh, see uh, the recorded version which is that uh, yellow orange uh, what was that side i said to see but most often i not see it i think uh, that also is uh, quite uh, uh, i think it was expected i also thought in fact i also do quite often the same thing uh, whichever uh, webinars i miss i decide that i will see it afterwards but generally i i don't see it afterwards so if you are actually live on the webinar itself you see it otherwise whatever you miss it generally you miss it unless you are really determined uh, to so to see it uh, nitish what is your experience sir uh, i will uh, video suppose you are having you want to see a session at later date you can save it in one particular folder in facebook so many attempts what i do when i'm going to hospital in car i just you know, see it in between some interesting talk and all 
so i feel you know, people can say it but you know, they have to store it in a particular folder uh, the particular session they want to see at a later date yes otherwise it is very difficult to search and difficult yes. to to see i think so what you have said is right facebook to save save a talk yes i think you what you have said has uh, yeah. really uh, important thing because i saw that uh, when the classes were going on in the beginning of the uh, covid uh, started and our residents uh, that time whatever classes were going on they used to save that in a particular folder exactly what you have said and um, they would say they said i said what are you doing all these things they said that no once we are actually going for the practical we'll open this folder and uh, listen to that it again so it is from the education point of view yes it is important but as you know the consultants uh, they are very lazy and once they miss it i don't think uh, the consultants have that much zeal and enthusiasm to watch it again i think these are these are all lot of questions which were answered lot of security concerns which are ad, uh, addressed i think uh, the whole objective of this webinar was to come to some conclusion and uh, that was for the rajiv tp to take uh, that uh, point from here onwards because he is the one who is looking at uh, various webinars very closely he wants to have the final authority what can be the beneficial for the various people not only from the students point of view but also from the uh, the uh, consultant point of view and just to give the update uh, i discussed that with uh, the uh, west zone usi secretary and they have completely shifted their programs to uh, webex uh, instead of a zoom for whatever reasons they had but i think uh, from the overall the webex and the zoom they are the ones which uh, definitely will uh, are on the top two so rajiv if i want you to conclude what is the value of this webinar how you got benefited from the webinar and what things as a usi secretary you have picked up from the webinar and after your comments uh, we will conclude the uh, the webinar thank you sir like uh... Uh, the thing is that uh, we have been many questioners were been coming out because right from the beginning usi has been with the zoom so in between there were a lot of uh, this uh, zoom belongs to china there were a lot of uh, thing came even after the ministry of home affairs advisory came in so there were a lot of um, members were sending mail to me saying that we should usi should discard zoom and shift over to some other platform so we have got to gone in depth into the security concerns and other things and we found out that this was uh, more of a phobia created by the media and uh, there are a lot of things like it is not that the key is always in china what we had subscribed is uh, with the us and uh, the government of india has given certain guidelines also how we can protect the platform and we went into we take to call those into concern and we for, followed it strictly and uh, we have been uh, till date we have been going with zoom and uh, in fact with uh, many of the young uh, turks in neurological society of india i have been uh, constantly in touch on a day to day basis in fact how to improve this uh, platforms what are the different things because i was thinking of a platform wherein which can be connected to multiple platforms in fact for example now usi is having a official usi youtube channel usi is having an uh, usi official facebook group as well as we uh, uh, through the uh, we normally we use the zoom platform for the uh, speakers and the moderators whereas we give the viewers the facebook uh, uh group and the youtube and that's why we wanted all the members to join the facebook group and i have time and again sent many mail mass mails to all the members kindly join the usi facebook group so we can be, uh, make it a solid group of the members of the urology society of india and uh, our members can easily uh, go to the facebook group see it and most of our webinars have been uh, stored on the facebook group so at any leisure time any member even if they have missed it and they can see and now what i found is 
more than our members, the members from the SAR countries are utilizing it. Because most of the SARC members have in fact joined the USI Facebook because they are uh, SARC members of the Urological Society of India. So many of the concerns has been addressed by Nitesh and uh, Bijit. And uh, I, in my idea, social media is one of the things which will come in a big way in the days to come. And uh, now most of our members have got a taste of the virtual thing. So even if there is a physical contrast, it will be a habit to have something on the virtual platform in the days come. This is definite. If uh, COVID pandemic breaks off or anything, even if there are physical CMEs or anything, you can see many uh, uh, these webinars and other things going on in the evening time, some two hour programs coming. It will be a thing because even though we don't have any physical interaction, face to face interaction is there. And now we are far off, we are not uh, close to each other, but it gives a feeling that we are interacting uh, with each other very freely. So, <clears throat> uh, in fact, among the societies, medical societies across the world, I think USI is having the maximum experience of uh, you having the webinars on a virtual platform. And uh, <clears throat> we are trying to sort out and we are trying to fine tune our thing, like we in fact have subscribed which has already been highlighted by Nitesh, we had subscribed uh, Restream. So with the Restream app, we are linking into the other platforms, which is very easy and very free. Because with Restream, I think we can uh, <coughs> stream according to 30 other platforms. It, has, it gives the access. So we had temporarily subscribed for one month. We are seeing it. And if it works out well, we will be subscribing on a yearly basis. So I told you this is a new normal and it is there to stay. Even if COVID goes, physical Congress has happened. This, the COVID has taught us this about a virtual platform. Indeed, it is there to stay. And uh, those who are not using social media will gradually become friendly with social media and uh, they try to use the Regarding one more questions put in the how the questions are put in the Facebook or YouTube can be answered. USA is very freely. Most of our viewers are through YouTube or through the Facebook, but we get the questions in the chat box because as uh, it has been highlighted by uh, Obijit, there should be someone there who takes up the questions and puts it across into the chat box to the moderators. Or if there are two moderators, one can take up the questions and it can be answered, shared to the experts and uh, moderators, and it can be easily answered. Well, thank you. Thank you, Rajiv. I think you have uh, given a really uh, nice conclusion of uh, what actually can be picked up from this uh, sort of a session. I must thank uh, Mitesh for a wonderful lecture. You have done a lot of uh, um, the social media study and you have narrated in a very nice way. Sitan, I must say that you must have put in a lot of effort to come out with those uh, that crisp uh, presentation. And this is one webinar. I'm certainly sure that this should be stored. This should be washed again and again. Afterwards also, because there are lots of things which may not be, we may not grasp that at one go. But as you keep seeing it, many, many things will come and then it will be very useful to this. Well, I must uh, say that the whole concept of this uh, webinar, this topic, uh, was Dr. Abhijit Patil's idea. He was very enthusiastic about organizing this. He is very technically, very, very sound. He has a huge grasp about the technicalities of various things, as you can see from his presentation, as he's very tech savvy. If you tell him to do some research, immediately he will see websites and is that. As a young Turk, as uh, Raju TP said, that young Turks are usually all uh, the technically very sound. So he does a lot of research, and he was very enthusiastic of having this webinar. And we could see from his uh, presentation also that he has done lots of uh, research, and he presented also very well. So the success and the credit of this whole webinar article certainly is yours. Thank you very much for that. Uh, that a nice idea, and. Uh, uh, 
coming that into reality uh, is helped by uh, Rajiv TP, by Nitish Jain and uh, Jishan. And uh, Rajiv wants to say something before we stop. As you already highlighted, Obijit is one of the Turk behind me in the advisory board for the social media and these webinar platforms. So good, we are good, almost good. a day-to-day -day basis interaction, how to improve it, how to have a better streamline and other things. Right, I right. Just came, I just said Young Turks, so he is one of them. Right, right. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you very much. And with this, uh, I thank the audience. And with this, we leave the meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, you, Sabni, sir, and Raju TV, sir. Thank you, thank you sir. Bye. Thank you, Nitesh, sir. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Abhishek. Bye. Bye, Jishan, sir.